You're listening to The Power Project. I'm your host, Brandy Voth. I also like to think that I'm your guide along this journey of purpose, which is where you will hopefully end up at the end of this podcast. I'm a mom, a wife, a daughter, a friend, an entrepreneur, an advocate in the fight against human trafficking. I wear a lot of hats, y'all, but don't we all? And most importantly, I am passionate about inspiring women to go out and lead purpose-filled lives while owning your God-given power. I have this crazy belief that we are all better when we lift each other up, which is exactly why I created this platform to spotlight other women that are leading in ministry, business, and nonprofits in the hopes that you at home will be inspired by their stories to get up and take action in order to walk in purpose and own your God-given power. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Welcome back to The Power Project, you guys. I am really excited to have my guest on today. We've kind of been playing tag for months, and it is by no means her fault because she is highly efficient and does a great job with a follow-up. She has been so patient with me while I've kind of like navigated this whole new normal that we are all walking through. So my guest today, you guys, is Tamara Andres. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm so excited to be here, and I love that you called me patient. I have to pass that off to my husband to let him know that I have patience, because that is something I'm constantly working on. So I'm grateful that you received that from me, and still praying over it daily to be better at it, because as an entrepreneur, we often don't have that. We're go, go, go all the time, and uh, I love that that you grabbed that from me above all things. Girl, there is a reason that patience is a virtue. I know it. I know it. It is. I am like you know where your weaknesses are, and you know that God's strength like is abundant in those spaces when you're constantly at your feet in that place. It's just natural in every part of my life that I'm like, ooh, I want to see what's next, even if it's bad. I'm like, I want to be past the patience place so that I can like exceed what it is that I have expected for myself because God's fruit is so good, even in the hard things. And I've been through many hard things in order to get where I am now. So I know that it's worth it. Do you think that sometimes, because I personally have experienced this, do you think that sometimes it's actually, um, a less patience and just more, uh, persistence? Oh, absolutely. I think, consistency, especially even in this time has been something that I've had to just relish in and know that it is worth it to just keep going and keep pursuing. And that's with your relationship with the Lord too, because even in the places that I want to know more of him in it's, he's definitely going to reveal himself all at one time. And that's like a good, good father, right? That's like a good, good friend. Even, even a first date, you don't go on the first date and say, this is all of me. I didn't do that with my husband and he surely didn't do it with me. He was way more of a puzzle. And here we are, gosh, 12 years together. And I'm so grateful for that unopening process. And that is a part of the patience is, is he has such good things for us, but we have to be with the weight. Oh, I like, I struggle. I struggle so much with patience. I am not a patient person. And I one time had another, uh, another collaboration where the girl said, your patience yeah. with me, you know, is, is outstanding. And I was <laughs> like, oh no, no, no girl. Listen, like yeah. my tombstone will say she was nothing if not persistent. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So good. So that I'll probably claim that too. I'm going to take that right now because I, I love that you called me patient, but it's probably just I wrote it down so I didn't forget. And then I came back and said, hey, again. (laughs) And I, so I know that, so since we both have already said that we are not patient people and you talked about, you like the answers and you, um, you appreciate the, the revealing process that God does, but it doesn't come natural to just wait on that. Yeah. How have you with my certain, and, and maybe this doesn't apply to you. We'll see. Okay. With my certain experience with, with what we're going through, because we are recording this in the midst of COVID-19 yeah. and yeah. the dumpster fire that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I like to know, I like to have a plan. I always have a plan. And my plan may be a one-week plan and then a 30-day plan, six-month plan, 12-month plan, five-year plan, 10-year plan, right? And 
I like to have those things that I know I'm working towards. And when things are rocked and our world is completely turned upside down, I've struggled with that. And I personally have had to get really deep and really intentional with God saying, no, I actually trust you. Like, I don't just say I trust you. I trust you. I trust your plan. And I trust that it's better than my own, even though it doesn't feel good. How have you, uh, what has your experience been through all of this and how have you navigated that? Yeah, I think for me, I'm one of those people who I don't watch the news And so that has really helped me stay consistent and persistent in what it is that God had already promised me for my plan this year, for his plan this year, for the vision that I know he has for me. That's been a huge part of it. Um, And at the same time, I don't live underneath a rock either. And so being mindful of the fact that other people are sometimes living in fear or have been living in fear through this process or um, have pressed pause, if you will, on the dreams and the things that they were working on. Or like you, like you didn't really have a choice. It was kind of swept up from, from beneath you and you're like, okay, manufacturing has stopped. Okay, printing has stopped. All of these things can happen in, in such an unexpected way. And so I realized that so often it's really about the expectations that we have over the plan that we honestly create uh, that can leave us in this state of shock or this state of grieving. And yet God never intended it for it to happen that way anyway. So even in this, this chaos, God knew this was going to happen. It's already in his plan. He already has the goodness that's going to come out on the other end of it. And so it's us being persistent. I'm going to use that word again because it's so good. It's us staying rooted in the truth and the knowledge of what he's already given and promised us for us to come out on the other side, still breathing and still in our faith in the way that we are and hopefully deeper in our faith because I don't know about you, but through this time, I've seen so much goodness. And yes, there is a lot of brokenness and there's been a lot of pain and a lot of hurt and a lot of tears that have come from it as well. But I have had abundant time with my babies that I I wouldn't have otherwise had. I have had an opportunity to press in into my business, into my coaching clients that they wouldn't have otherwise had that ability to do. I've had the ability to connect in such a way that I wouldn't have otherwise, because we often live in this like supersonic speed of quote unquote normal. And I, I don't want to go back to that. I want there to be uh, an intentionality in what it is that I'm doing. And this season has made me be super intentional. Yeah. And I think that one of the biggest things that I struggled with was realizing and really accepting the fact that that God knew this was coming, right? Like exactly. this was yeah. part of his plan. And I also was able to see it through a more eternal lens yeah. as I was looking and, and realizing this earth, right, is just part of the plan, but it's not the goal. It's not the mm. whole plan. And there's something so much bigger and so much greater. And all of this is just a part of that. So I personally had to like seriously like practice what I preach and, yeah. um, lean into that. And I think, like you said, it gave it, I've seen so much beauty out of this. I've seen so many more conversations about, about God and who God is and what his plans are for our life. I obviously, I, I know that those that are in, um, non-healthy family situations are not thriving in this time. And my heart breaks for that. And I know that the women that I serve are definitely more vulnerable at this time, but also I've seen the nuclear family unit be restored in, in the healthy families. I've seen people who, who, what, you know, moms who've traveled for work for years are telling me that they're spending more time than they've ever spent with their kids and their kids are teenagers. And, you know, I, you and I discussed this, you said you've had time with your babies. Mine is going to be in high school next year. And I, every single day, I'm grateful for this pause. I keep telling him, I'm so thankful for the great pause. Like I'm so thankful that I'm getting to spend time with him away from friends and away from sports and away from all the distractions because he's going to be gone in four years. Like he's going to be out of my house in four years. And it's, it's so I've seen the beauty come through it. Yeah. I love, I love the word, like the great pause. It makes me think of like the great depression or all of these other things that have been just so, um, 
you know, monumental in our history as a country. And, you know, there's global um, experiences like that as well. And so I wonder, I think it's probably just going to be called COVID-19 or isolation or social distancing or something. But I would love if we could adopt it as the great pause, because yes, there are people who are not paused during the season, like nurses and teachers have been, they might feel paused because they don't get to be with the babies, but heaven knows they're working extra hard in this virtual learning experience and you know politics and all that clearly they they have <laughs> gone supersonic crazy but in my opinion there are you know a majority of people who have been on pause and i really believe because i i started my coaching journey under this understanding of the mind, body, and soul alignment and what that means for us as humanity, specifically as women. And um, in that, the importance of the fact that so many people are in a pause that they've never experienced in their life before. And this is a place that stress could actually be mended and sicknesses could actually be healed because they're taking the time to say, what's the root of this? And I hope that's what they're doing. And they're not just Netflixing all day long, but coming into this, this space of joy of, oh my goodness, like I love not going to work nine to five. I love cooking. I love you know, fishing. I love whatever it is that has come out of this season and people have an opportunity that they've just never been gifted before. And so it's all about mindset in that regard of how are you approaching this season and how can you look at it from a different lens versus through the lens of potential fear or, or pain? I think that two things you said there, I just told my husband this morning, I'm like, I wish that, so we're in the aerospace industry. We make parts for airplane seats obviously not a really great business to be in right, right now. No. And so we've been looking into diversifying that manufacturing and, and bringing in some different industries. And this morning I'm like, I wish we were in the fishing industry, <laughs> right? Because there are more people fishing than ever before. Like it's so true. We are a family of fishermen. Like that is what we do on vacation. We do deep sea fishing. We live at a lake, but everybody's fishing. <laughs> Yeah, it's so great. It's all the, every time we pass a little watering hole, my kids are like, ooh, that'd be a good place to fish. And they, I mean, they're five and six. So this is like their first real experience to fish. And I love it because it's honestly, we were talking earlier about how you love that in regard to yoga and like a place that you can rest your mind. I feel like whenever I'm at the beach or in front of water, like that's my space, right? Mm-hmm. And fishing, my hyperactive, full speed, outdoors, loving six-year-old will fish for three hours. And I'm like, this is heaven. He's in one spot. I don't have to chase him everywhere. And like, we have these deep conversations and laughter and like, ultimately I'm in front of my place and that's just like staring at the water. So that's been definitely really cool. Another industry that's been interesting and taken uh, a huge spike is the biking industry. So my dad is a salesman at a bike shop locally and they're having $20,000 days in this one bike shop and they have multiple. And so I'm just like, holy cow, people are spending money. They're still spending money. The economy might be broken, the restaurant industry and a lot of other small boutiques, but this small business is thriving. Yes. And I think that, and this is going to segue nicely into the exact question I was about to ask you. Good. I think that it's really easy to look around and see like, oh my gosh, all these businesses. And and yes, y'all, I am in the heart of it. We are in the oil business in Texas. Trust me, I know the devastation that we are going through economically, 100%. Like five five out of six businesses are hit for us right now. However, there are businesses that are thriving right now that are doing so well. And so I think that we have two options here. And this, these are conversations I'm having with people on almost a daily basis. The option is, do we stay where we're at and wallow in it and say, this sucks <laughs> or, and, and collect, you know, whatever, like unemployment or stimulus or PPP or whatever, or do we, do we pivot? And I know that my husband and I, like our superpower to success is the fact that we get knocked down, we get back up and we pivot. And that's literally like, one of my, I tell everyone that's the best thing you can have. So you coach people Mm one-on-one. Are you having those conversations where people are looking back and they're saying, maybe what I was doing didn't serve me in the first place. Like 
maybe this is an opportunity for a new start. Yeah. So I have the unique like space of startups. Like uh, that's really when people come to me, um, they're at the place where they have a passion and they're ready to turn that passion into their purpose. And they know that they're made for more. And so it's interesting that, um, you asked me this question because for them, it's been a time of growth and they've actually, they have press play. And that was like literally out the gate, uh, a conversation that we had on our coaching. And this is a group coaching program that I'm specifically talking about. Um, but even for my one-on-one, they're like, I see this opportunity and I, I think other people see it too. And I feel kind of almost shameful around the fact that I'm about to start thriving out of what has been really painful or hurtful for other people. And so I have my, my clients to have small boutiques locally and it's completely changed everything for them. Have they stopped? No, they've kept going completely. Have they had to pivot? 1000%. And that's because they weren't in the online space. A lot of the people that I coach are are virtual. And so they have this experience where they're like, I've already tapped into this. I've already coached this way. I've already teach this way. I already provide this. It's just how can you create that more abundantly and how can you serve better when there's other people coming to the table to do the exact same thing now? And so that's where like e-courses have launched or new Facebook groups have emerged or um, new books are starting to be written and new Facebook lives are happening. And so it's really neat to see how people are utilizing it um, to their advantage. And that's where, again, God uses all things for good. And I think even those those small businesses that have taken a hit, those pivots are going to be what makes or breaks, you know, their long term success. So I want to, some of my listeners are familiar with, you know, we're talking about coaching and mentoring and some of my listeners are familiar with it and others are like, I have no idea what you're even talking yeah. about. How did you even get into, uh, into the, the personal coaching space? Yeah. So I had several businesses in my twenties and they were from uh, personal training and nutrition coaching to, I had my own boutique, uh, to, I launched a nursing brawl globally. So spectrum very wide. Right. And I came into my, my halting point, the time of my life where I had a one and a two year old at home and a very hot hubby who uh, were getting way less than the attention that they deserved. And I know a part of my purpose in retrospect, because I didn't quite claim it then is them. They're my first ministry. Right. And yet I was t- letting my, my Enneagram three entrepreneurial, like driven, yeah, girl right here, <laughs> like take ownership of who I am. And that's a part of who I am, but it's not the only hat that I wear or that I've been blessed with. And so I went to a screeching halt based on many poor decisions. I failed forward, if you will. And I started unpacking who I am, and who I am claimed by. And I had no idea at that point that Jesus played the role in my life the the way that he did uh, to the extent that he did until I took that pause. And so talking about the great pause, that would have been the great pause of my life because it was 18 months of not striving, not going after achievement other than to achieve the fact that I wanted to stay married, that I wanted to stay a, a, a so solid home for my babies. And so uh, I became a stay-at-home mom. And that was when I really dived into like Instagram and all of that world. And I realized that there's a lot of striving that can take place even in that space. And so I had to really hone in on what it is and who I am in that time. And I decided to go get my ordination and minister's license. So other than being home with my babies, I was full bore in my Bible. I was at every church function that they had. I was at every coaching opportunity, every small group, every book that I could read. I went to conferences with my pastors who I'd known for less than four months because I was just like, take me with you. Let me be your baby under your wing. And I just had this transformational season of aha moment after aha moment as God revealed what it is that he had in store for me all along. Um, I call it the silver lining, like of our life when I'm coaching people, because there's often highs and that's the high points are the places that people always reflect back on. But the low points are the places where you actually learn the most and you're actually the most vulnerable to receive the learning lesson. And so that being a low, I ended up 
coming out of that with this un understanding of that connection point that I mentioned earlier of your mind, body, and soul, and what that means to me in a more easy, tangible experience is that I would fragment my, I fragmented my life. I was, you know, a physical being, so I would work out. Right. And I wanted to be a size specific pre baby body. I would like nutrition was all about getting into the right genes and having that picture perfect body. My mind, I did not worry about mindset. I didn't even really know what that meant or what, um, you know, growth mindset. We talked about that before, what that is. And then my spiritual life was just a check in the box, like likely a lot of Christians are. And I, I even wore my entrepreneurial hat as another part to who I was. And I never put all of them together. And when I did, this transformation happened almost instantaneous, instantaneously where I realized this is such an unlock for me that it has to be the unlock for so many other people. So I started sitting down just for coffee dates and it was really just people wanted to know what happened and how I was this new person, like legit, I had a light within me that I had never experienced before. And I wanted to get it into other people. And so just hanging out with people, coaching them, not knowing I was coaching them. I didn't even use that word. I was just hanging out with my friends and they wanted more. They wanted to unpack it. They wanted to understand what do you mean? How did you do it? Like they wanted the tangible resources of what that meant in their spiritual walk, in their fitness, um, physical realm and in their mindset. And so uh, I started gaining my own mentors at that point. And these were entrepreneurial mentors, but also mindset mentors. It's people like Julie Solomon. Um, this was before I even knew who Rachel Hollis was. And so she wasn't a part of that picture at that point. Um, Tony Robbins came in actually late to the game for me as a mentor as well. And then it was in that season, I realized women desperately need this. Mm -hmm. because of that supersonic speed. And so the cultivation of the fit and faith podcast happened at that point, as well as the retreat. And so I wanted to take women into this place of pause, uh, but by choice, because they have to actually invest in themselves to say and coordinate the babysitters and get all the things organized in order for them to take a weekend away. And so they people were coming, we had 20 women come together. And I basically coached them through spiritually, mentally, and physically, how I had these aha moments. And I saw so many women transformed in that time frame that I knew this is what I was called to do. And so that's when my coaching started really full, full bore and uh, individually and as a group. And so what that means for people who don't really get what that means, it's not really it's, it's a teacher, but it's more a cheerleader um, in the sense that you have somebody who helps pull out of you what you're already gifted and born to do. And so I'm not coming to the table saying like, let's, you should do this. I'm coming to the table saying, tell me about who you are so that I can help you discover whose you are and where that purpose point of your life aligns through your mind, body, and soul development. I love that. I love that. And did you start, did you have the podcast before you did the retreat? I did. I okay. did. So, so I, was, I, had, I actually had group coaching, then the podcast, then the retreat, and then group coaching shifted a bit more and became more voluptuous in regards to business. And now um, that's kind of where things are thriving at this point. That's funny because mine went retreat, podcast, group coaching. Ah! Like, cool. That's so, so interesting. Funny. But I, so, and I think that what you bring to the table is so good and so unique and you and I are in the same space and we, we see the same people. And I was really, really determined because there's this, there's this divided line in, in Christianity of people that, that have a complete adverse reaction to the term self-love or yeah. self-improvement or personal development because, and I've heard this so many times, like people go to the self-help section, but all they have to do is go to the Bible. And I wanted to create a space because as I became more aware of who I was created to be and what my strengths and my gifts are that God instilled within me, I so, I, I've done so much more for the kingdom of God. Yeah. with that realization. And so I love that you have this as a faith-based 
Christian coaching session and you're an ordained minister, which is amazing. Like, I, I love that your first thought was like, I need to become a minister. Yeah, I know, right? I just wanted all of Jesus. And I felt like that was the only, like, there was another program that I did too, which was actually for worship leaders. And I, you do not want me to sing and I can hardly even touch the ukulele. So I'm not in that realm at all. I was not their target market, but it this concept, it was called burn 24 seven. It's still available now. If somebody wanted to walk through it and it was a year long program that I did right before I decided I was going to do my ordination and minister's license. And, um, it, unpacked that relational God in such a beautiful way through worship. And I know you share that desire for, in love of music. I will, I will be front row, but you will not see me on stage. And I, I just found through sound that God has this ability to speak to us in such a beautiful way. So I was encouraged even in silence, which I think is really important for people to understand that you can still hear the music of God when it is completely silent. It's just, how are you tuning in to what it is that he's showing you? Um, So yeah, it's been a beautiful unfolding that I am really grateful for. And I think we can utilize it more. It's important for us to have an an ability to operate only out of overflow. And that's what self-love is. If you are thinking that your selfishness in regards to self-love, and I know there's the whole realm of mom guilt in this regard of, you know, I, I can't take time away from them. I've just been at work all day and now I'm supposed to go like work out and have a bubble bath and read the Bible and my devotional. I need a minute. Okay. Mommy needs a minute. Mommy does need a minute because if she doesn't take that minute, where is that energy going to come from? How is she going to overflow with love, overflow with the, the motivation factor, overflow with the teaching? Um, it, it's so necessary as your main source because God is there in that overflow moment and he's there filling you up. But if you don't reach for it, you're going to be starved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Hey guys, if you've considered starting a podcast, but you're overwhelmed by how to actually launch, I've created a basics of podcasting course over on Skillshare. So you can sign up for my course and get two months of free premium membership. Skillshare is where I learn all types of skills that I don't know how to do otherwise. I'll include the link in the show notes. You can head over to Skillshare and search Brandy Both class, the basics of podcasting. Friends, I hope that you enjoyed what you heard today. I know that I was inspired by Monica's authenticity and vulnerability about the subject of loneliness. And I firmly agree that it applies to so many people and not just those grieving. As always, if you enjoyed what you heard today, could you do us a huge favor Go write a review, rate us, and share us with all of your friends on social media. This is how we get to keep coming every single week, having these conversations that we bring to you, our listeners. It's also how we're able to book really incredible guests such as Monica week in and week out. So show us some love, friends. I can't wait to chat with you next week, but until then, go out and live your best purpose-filled lives. And you are incredibly faithful. It's obvious here. And I know that we, we talked about this previously, but did you have one, you weren't raised in the church, correct? Right. And did you have just that one moment that you can pinpoint on when you gave your life to Christ, when you knew that you needed him? Yeah. Um, So I remember the moment where I felt him for the first time, which was on my couch, sitting next to my husband with who I call my second mama um, in a place where my husband and I were unsure of what the future looked like for us, um, what the future looked like for me. I was completely broken in the striving, in the, um, I was exhausted and I was just utilizing a lot of negative outlets to fill me, just like I was talking about that self-love. I wasn't self-loving. I was, um, I was putting band-aids on and they were, they had no stick. Okay. They weren't lasting very long. Things like, um, shopping, things like, uh, external appearance, which is where that fitness realm really came in to play with me. Um, things like alcohol. So I was 
choosing things to numb me versus actually addressing the root. So I'm sitting there on the couch and it was pouring down rain and I have a large reference of rain and thunderstorms in my life. I was married in a thunderstorm on the beach in a summertime rain shower that didn't want to go away. Um, My son was born in a thunderstorm. There's just a lot of rain that has happened in my life and it always happens on these massive days. And so this specific day was like a turning point for us where we were knowing that we had one choice and my mama came over and she sat with us on the couch for nearly three hours. And during that, my own internal rainstorm was finally being released. It was raining outside. And by the end of the conversation, the sun was shining. I went from like nasty crying to just like uplifted. My shoulders were higher than they'd ever been. I felt like God had touched me in that moment. And from that was the pursuit of Jesus. Like, what just happened? How did her prayer just transform me from, I want to not be present on this earth to, I can't imagine leaving this earth in a three hour time span. And she was literally carrying the Holy spirit when she walked into our house. And I, at that point, truly didn't even know what that meant. So I am forever transformed by that moment. And then additionally, when I was at uh, the Pentecostal church that took us in, me and my husband, um, we were actually not even in our own city. We actually had to go to another whole city just to show up in the comfortability of who we are and who God had us um, in front of in that very moment. And just being at the altar, handing over everything that I had worked for in my life and saying, God, use me, bend me, mold me, strip me of everything that I've known about myself and teach me who it is that you see me as, because the person that I see in the mirror is not the person that I want to be. And so I'm grateful to be where I am now. And that's a part of the book that we just recently released um, as a collective group, because it's a co-authored book by 24 other women called the She Writes for Him, Stories of Resilient Faith. And so you can really unpack what that story and what that moment looked like for me as I um, discovered things of my life that I had suppressed so deeply that I didn't even know existed and affected my marriage and my mothering and my life in a very uh, sad way. And this is why I love interviewing podcasters because (laughs) that was my next question. (laughs) So good. (laughs) was about the book. It's called She Writes for Him. And we will put it in the show notes where you guys can read about that. And I think this is really important. And this is the whole reason that I have a podcast and that I do what I'm doing and that I've written a book. And this, I'm sure the same for you because God uses our stories to help others see themselves in it. Because maybe the person at home doesn't even, maybe the concept of giving their life to Christ is huge and it seems really overwhelming. And they're like, I'm going to have to change and I'm going to have, and I don't, church people are weird and I'm going to start talking about Jesus and I, no, I'm going to Netflix and chill, right? And so I think that when we share stories like this authentically and when you put your story in a book and when you put yourself out there on a podcast, Someone can resonate with constantly trying to achieve, constantly trying to perform, constantly trying to hustle and having a marriage falling apart and having just desperation and despair. And they can see that in you. They can see that story and read that story. And then they can see like God's redemptive glory in all of it. And it's kind of like you and I, uh, we discussed earlier about writing books and writing books in different saying the same underlying theme with different people, like the gospels are all the same story, just told a different way because somebody's going to resonate with each gospel differently and, and see Jesus and learn who God is. So I think that is absolutely awesome. And I'm so grateful to get to know you more in depth other than just a conversation about a hat at a conference. Yes. (laughs) So good. I'm so glad I I touched base with you. I I saw that hat. I'm like, I'm coming for that hat. I'm getting it. The the first one off the line with this new production is mine. (laughs) Oh yes. And we are going to put your word on it. Illuminator. It will be hand stamped by some traffic survivors and aftercare program and sealed with all the love and all the faith and all the prayers to bless your mission even further. Thank you. What would you say today to the, the woman that is sitting at home that feels like maybe she has a call on her heart, but she's not certain. 
what step to take next. What is the one thing that you would just like her to know? And what would you leave her with today? This has been a theme for me recently. So I'm going to keep going with it because I think it's so necessary and needs to get out there. You're ready. The lie you're telling yourself is that I'm not ready, but you are ready. You were born ready. God has perfectly timed this moment of your life where the passion is boiling inside. You're a little bit nervous. You're a little bit fearful. Um, He has already utilized the highs and lows to get you to the place where you can say yes. And so all that you have to do is release the fear and say yes, because he's already equipped you. You don't need a certification. You don't need a degree. You don't need to invest in another program that you don't even know what's going to come of it. What you need to do is lean in and know that you already have what what he's equipped you with. And that is your unique purpose. That's your unique superpower. And that's the whole point of the power project, right? Tamara, that'll preach. Yeah, girl. (laughs) Oh, I love that. I love that. I so look forward to everything that we collaborate on in the future, because I know that this isn't the last conversation. And I know that obviously there is a message that God wants women to hear right now. And otherwise he wouldn't be putting this mission and this message on so many of our hearts to share with the world. And I am thrilled to hang out with you and let you share it with your gorgeous blonde hair. And I'll share it with my, my brown hair. (laughs) Come together. And then, you know, when you get ready to take a trip to Texas, I've got a great lake to fish on. Yeah, girl, we're coming. All my babies will be jumping in there and swimming alongside the fishies too. We got to go water babies. Thanks so much for coming on. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I'm so pumped to, to be in connection. I wrote a book, you guys, and I would love to have you be part of the official launch team. Head over to the-powerproject.com, sign up for the newsletter, and I will make sure that you are one of the very first to get your hands on this book. If you enjoyed what you heard in today's show, can I ask that you go write a review, give us a rating, we'll take five stars, and tell all your friends. I can't wait to chat with you next week, but until then, live your best purpose-filled lives.